So I've got here this um, wonderful copy of Pokemon Emerald, and this is something that uh, one of my buddies sent to me. He found out that there was an issue with it when he tried plugging it into his Game Boy and booting it, and then it destroyed his Game Boy. Uh, so what's going on here is uh, someone somewhere at some point tried replacing the battery on the um, on the cart and they made a total mess of the pins on this thing um, this is after it's already been worked on every single pin on this thing was shorted so it is still not in a good place if we take continuity meter, put one probe on ground, the other on voltage, you see it's still a dead short. So if I even try booting this thing, whatever I plug it into is not going to be happy. Um, so let's see if we can't try fixing it. I am going to try lifting the mask ROM. I'm going to use my George Foreman here. But I'm going to see if I can't lift the mask ROM and assess the damage to this thing. The PCB itself doesn't really look that bad, aside from the fact that it's missing all these components. And some of these legs are still bent, but perhaps those legs are unnecessary. So we're going to we're gonna try it out, see what happens. I guess I'll go ahead and zoom that in a little bit. Uh, but this is a... Japanese version of Emerald, so G A X P J. Um, so, oh yeah, there we go. A G B A X P J. So, if for some reason this isn't salvageable, not all is lost, but we'll give it a shot anyway. It shouldn't be too bad, and um, as long as I can salvage the mask ROM and the flat and the flash, we should be good. If there's something wrong with the PCB, yeah, that'll suck. But I have full schematics for this, and even replacement PCBs. If I wanted to jam that in there. Quick check and see if that solved our problem. No, it didn't. So, there's either another short with some of these pins here, which is entirely likely. I've restored chips like this before. The problem is there's still a bunch of solder on these bent contacts. Makes it real difficult to unbend them.
It's missing a lot of components too. I think we can get away with leaving most of those out. There's at least one we'll need, R9, otherwise this thing won't have real-time clock. I think we're getting ahead of... I think I'm getting ahead of myself though, so... Hey, short's gone. So that was it. Problem is, at least one of these pads is gone. And that looks like it's supposed to be connected. That one too. So, probably not going to try salvaging this board. Especially when I literally have spares. But this is one of the biggest reasons why I don't recommend trying to replace a battery on a cart as your first time soldering. Because a lot of the time, you know what, yeah, it's perfectly fine. But sometimes people just really don't know what they're doing and it's gonna cause problems. I mean, if nothing else, now that I've got the mask ROM off and the short gone, I can still dump the save, so... We're not totally beyond redemption yet. I think I need... to wake this up a little bit more. Worst case scenario, I might have to whip out the Dremel and um, shave down some of the casing and then patch this with like magnet wire or something. It looks like all the pins are there though, so might be able to salvage it. Just have to get in from the right angle. Alright, they're all separated, I uh, think, nope, almost. Those might not be soldered together though, so I'll circle back. And some strange miracle, so far all of the pins have been there. Ooh, 
Oh, that was a close one. These are actually not good tweezers for this. There we go. Yeah, I think the easiest way to continue straightening these out is would be to just solder this thing down and then manually bend the pins until I can get them pointed where they need to go. And even though this is the Japanese version of the game, it is still like a $25, $30 game. So, trying to salvage this is within my best interests. If it were like a $5 game, or less, you know, who would care? Got to be careful because these white solder mask boards are quite delicate. The mask itself is at least. This mockery of soldering that I'm doing is not helping. Now I can just try mashing these pins down one at a time. And I think I'll be able to get that done. Oh, my light's in a weird spot.
most of these pins are a little bit worse for wear, so I'm just gonna go over all of them. Pretty sure there's a short. So did I already? No. Oh hey, those aren't shorted. Cool, cool. Decide. That's definitely shorted. Yeah, it's definitely not perfect, but I think we'll be good. Let's double check. Ow. I just put the probe into my finger. That was pleasant. There's no short. Is that shorted to that? Nope. That to that? Nope. That to that? Nope. That to that? Nope. That to that? Nope. Boom, I think we're good. And they're all soldered down. Nice. So let's keep going. All right, now I need the flash chip. Ooh, that was dangerous.
think we're about done here. Looks like there's a little bit of a short to clean up. Yeah, one of these days I'll figure out how to do it with just the wick. Or with just the soldering iron. No short. Good enough for me. Let's try it out. New Game Boy. Let's try not to ruin my brand new Game Boy. Ah? Uh, ah? Uh? <laughs> Oh, it's not emerald. What do you know? Sapphire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, battery's low. Oh, but look at that. All eight badges, 138 hours. Elite four. I don't remember what this stuff is offhand, but this is a very well played save. Um, they've got several Pokemon fainted. Can't believe they left off at that. Oh, this has been traded. Because there's no legendaries and there's no starter. Man, so someone knew they were done with this. That's a shame. Saves all right. What do you know? 176 seen, 134 caught. Okay, so they they weren't doing that hot, but still pretty darn good. What do you know? I can't finish assembling this right now because I don't have all of the parts. I'm gonna touch up that solder joint because that looks sketchy as hell. Still ain't doing so good. In fact, I think I just made it worse. Nope, we're good. Alright. I am gonna unplug that because we're done with it. I need to transfer over those resistors and capacitors.
it would be smart now to tape off these contacts so that I don't accidentally solder onto them. But I'm going to try and be extremely careful. And I think we're just missing one more. All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, on a lot of these carts, a lot of these components right here are optional, uh, but in this particular case, a lot of these components are also just missing, so I can't transfer them over. Uh, for example, we need R9. Battery's not gonna work, whether, like I, unless I solder that battery in, or unless I solder R9 in, whether I solder a battery or not, I'm not going to have real-time clock. Uh, C2 should be there, but that's just um, 0.01 microfarad decoupling cap. Pretty sure C1 is the same thing. Uh, but R4, R5, R2, R1, those, I believe those are all optional and aren't populated on every cart. Uh, C3 is also a decoupling cap that we're missing. Um, but I don't... I don't have any of that handy and I need to double check all the component values so I'm not going to solder that right now. But, huh? 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 Oop. Throwing it everywhere. I'm going to go clean this up. I'll be right back. Alright, there we go. Cleaned up pretty nicely. I was taking a look there and I didn't burn the solder mask but you can see where it's starting to wear away just from me trying to components onto it. Let me get another one here. Oh, you know what? Never mind. That's just how they look, apparently. Well, disregard. Here 
here is another sapphire. So you can see this one's missing a lot of those components, but it does have that resistor, that resistor, that capacitor. Oh, but it's missing the resistor down here. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what specifically we're going to need. But I will I'll probably use this one to measure off of, even though this is a slightly different revision. Hmm. Who knows? Well, at the very least, the battery should cover those um, mishaps from the pins. But uh, there you go. Aftermarket PCB to save the day. Why isn't this closing? I don't know, the emerald one closed. Still fits. Still works. <gasps> it doesn't still work. Could just be wet from cleaning. Oh no! Well, you saw it worked. Yeah, interesting. Now it's acting like there's no memory. There it goes. I guess it just wasn't seated. Oh, 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 oh no. Maybe I shouldn't have messed with it. You know, once I had it working, I should have just left it. Don't even bother cleaning it up. I don't see any shorts. The mangled pins over here still make me extremely nervous. That was interesting. Hmm. Well, I don't know. You win some, you lose some, I guess. Let's double check theirs in short. Those still look awful. No short. But I still hate how it looks. Unre unlikely to be the problem, but... Now there's definitely a short. Nice job.
Uh -huh. I see a problem. If it ain't broke, fix it till it is. Well, if I need another PCB, I have one. Manually soldered and reinforced basically all the pins, except for the ones closer down below. Double check, I didn't make a whoopsie. Okay. Those should no longer be shorted. They aren't. None of them are. I did lift a pad while I was messing around, so that could be related. That's unfortunate to drop this on a new PCB. You saw that it did work though, so I just have to do all that again, and then uh, I think we'll be good second time around. I never checked that there wasn't a short on this side. That's a shame. Oh well. Take two, I guess. I'll be back. So this time around, I decided we're gonna back it up. And, uh, I got it working again. Swapped it over to a new PCB. Dumping it right now, just in case. I don't know, I'm done with the ROM. I should just dump the save, but whatever. Neat feature of Flash GBX. Seems this cartridge's real-time clock battery is no longer functional. May need to be replaced. That is 100% true. It is not functional because it's not even soldered in. But, neat. There you go. Ta-da! Backed up, verified successfully. And we will back up to save data. And we'll just dump it in downloads because of course that's where they all go. Ta-da! So there we go. Got it soldered down again. Haven't even cleaned it up. It's dumped this time though, so if I mess it up again, I won't feel so bad. This is the old PCB. I ended up lifting that pad. Oh, just that pad, yeah. Um, 
Oh, and that pad. That's probably what was actually causing my problem in the first place. I lifted two pads. My problem was I set it down and then I'd start wiggling the pin, uh, yeah, the pins while they were still soldered. And that was helping nobody. Let's solder the components. Lord. I'm actually going to touch both of these up real quick. Since my grill's still on. Shame if my problem was all these little passives. But, oh well, we'll try it again. If it stops working again, then I'll just desolder these passives until it starts working again. Come on. Why don't you get flux on the tweezers? They never work right. There we go. Is I missing anything else? No, that's, that's it. Well, there we go. So yeah, 
All right, so I've got to do some more research, figure out exactly what resistor I'm missing. Um, and I guess I'll get it next time. I'm going to go clean this up again. And I'll see if that works. Ta-da! Yeah, yeah, battery's dead. There we go. My soldering is not the best. That is very sketchy. If I ever have to make any changes to this thing, like if I ever have to do any rework, I'm gonna get tons of shorts and that's gonna be a problem. But hopefully that should never occur. Uh, both sides are like that because I just l absolutely loaded these things up with solder. It probably wasn't the best idea, but Eh, it worked. Uh, all the other components are soldered, at least all the components that I have. I still need to replace C3, C1, C2, R9, and possibly R5. And possibly R4. I don't know about the rest of those, though. But anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps someone out there who might or might not have a damaged cart that either they or someone else tried to replace the battery on and um, ultimately failed. Uh, again, seriously, I, I'm i genuinely not trying to gatekeep, but if it's your first time soldering, try not to do it on your really expensive game. You know, maybe get a $3 solder practice kit or something and learn how to do it on that. I make soldering look easy because I'm sitting here on film soldering and I've been doing it for 10 freaking almost 20 years at this point. Um, I mean, arguably, I've only been as as good as I am within the last few years, but you know, there there's a learning curve and it's very difficult to jump right in without making some mistakes. And even you saw me today making mistakes while I was soldering this stuff together. Uh, I lifted two pads on this. I had to get a whole nother board. And I think I lifted a pad or two on this one already. But it's still booting, so I'm just going to leave it and ignore the problem and hope it never bothers me again. Um, but yeah, I have no idea why this was in an emerald case. Um... It is what it is. I also don't know why there's a whole bunch of warranty stickers on it, but, you know, I guess I, I had to peel the one warranty sticker off the back just to get into the Jesus thing. But there you go. In case like this example, because I don't... Like, I have an emerald case, but this isn't an emerald game. I don't even know if this is aftermarket. They usually have the little battery cut out there. That's bizarre. Oh, I guess it is aftermarket. What do you know? There's no little notches in it either. Uh, I guess that's why it was fitting in the emerald case better than it was fitting in the sapphire case. But um, there are new cases out there from uh, Crix, maker of the uh, EverDrive. And they're just... They're his EverDrive cases, but without the EverDrive logo and without the microSD cutout. But they work nicely for stock sized carts. Jam that in there. Ah, I see the problem. I see why Sapphire wasn't closing. Those little surface mount components got in the way and I just knocked one of them off. But I can file a cutout and then just use that. I have no idea what those components do because clearly it works without them. It could be a longevity thing. I don't know. There you go. I'll, uh, I guess I'll throw a link to HDR's GitHub repository with all these PCBs if you want to have some made for yourself. 0 0.8 millimeters, not the default 1.6. Uh, otherwise, uh, you'll want the electrolysis nickel immersion gold plating, uh, do not go with the stock hot air solder leveling, 
Um, hard gold would be better, but given the price, it's definitely not worth it. Um, and if your stock PCB is fine, don't even bother replacing it, just keep that. But mine had quite a few ripped pads, so that's where we're at. But anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, and I'll throw a link to Crix's carts in case you want some new cart shells. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time. Alright, so instead of uploading the video as is, I decided to just uh, put it off and do a parts order for this thing. It is technically working as is, but there is no real-time clock function, and that will never work unless we install R9 and a battery. Um, I should also install a few of the other missing components like uh, R5, C2, C1, and C3. And I went ahead and uh, placed orders for those components. So let's, let's get started. Um, thankfully, all of the components in our case are one of two. So I can just grab snip off three capacitors here. And these are 0 0.1 microfarad, 6.3 volt, 0402 caps. The bill of materials does not list these as the proper parts, but it doesn't list any parts. Uh, namely because the bill of materials is completely reverse engineered and uh, unfortunately it's kind of hard to measure caps of this value but based off of their proximity to chips and their placement otherwise the value can be inferred that these are just decoupling caps they are unnecessary but should provide more stable operation over the long run. So we'll add them. Why not? And so just like usual, get one side tacked down, flip it over to the other side, get that soldered, and then flip it back to the first side, and fix the joint that I messed up because that's usually what happens. Alright. <clears throat> Trying to approach this from an easier angle. Unfortunately, it seems that flux has made its way onto my tweezers, which is making this more difficult than it should be. C1, and then C2 over here.
Go. And then we need two resistors, also both thankfully the same. I don't know what the hell DigiKey was doing when they sent me this bag. They usually don't send such long bags. But anyway, we want specifically R5 and R9. Both of those are 10K ohm 0402 resistors. Those are on the bill of materials. And without at least R9, we will not have real-time clock. I have no idea what R5 does. Uh, but it does seem to be present on all of the uh, carts that I've seen. The other unpopulated components um, aren't always populated and so I don't know if in this case if they're missing or if they were just never required for this specific revision so we'll leave R1, R2, R3, and R4 those won't get populated This is frustrating. Cool. There's all the components. Give it a quick clean. I'm gonna start with my tweezers because they're driving me crazy. Just clean off the flux from all the soldering I just did. Just because I don't want to have to look at it. What's the point of having a board like this if it's not pretty, you know? Looks like the solder mask is damaged near R7. That's not flux I can clean off. 
That's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Before continuing, I'm going to go ahead and drop this in a shell and double check that I haven't ruined anything yet. So far, so good. Still no battery. Yeah, that makes sense. But otherwise, it's good. So to check the clock, I believe I will need to go back to the hometown. I don't know if that's fly. I think I'll have to worry about that later. Okay, so real quick, before we continue, just want to go over one thing. Um, this particular board is the one that is currently up on HDR's repository, his Nintendo PCB's repository on GitHub. It does not fit properly in OEM shells. If you try and slide this on, it gets stuck. You can't. Uh, the problem is these components down here are just a little bit too low and are interfering with this. You can trim that and it should fit. Uh, I believe it might be, the, no, can't be the capacitor. I think it's the crystal actually. It's a little bit too far over to the left as well and it's hitting that. Um, no, that's not it. I don't know what's hitting, but something else besides this resistor and that resistor are hitting and so it doesn't quite slide closed. Uh, I ran into the exact same problem with these um, Crick shells. It fits nicely in the back, but once you go and slide on the front, you can see if the board was in there straight. You could see it's hitting R7 before it even closes. One of the best features of these clear shells. Um, I know HDR is working on a new and improved version of his PCB. Uh, it's not uploaded yet. Couldn't give you an ETA if I wanted. Um, but in the meantime, it does work perfectly fine in aftermarket shells. So that's just what I'm going to keep using. But anyway... Let's get this finished up. Let's add a batteria and see if the RTC is working. Now I have been over this before in a separate video I made entirely on, you know, just, just doing batteries, but Game Boy Advance batteries are pretty darn easy. Um, the only caveat is the tab batteries you buy are flat tabbed. So if you go and try solder them down, the tabs don't actually reach the pads. They hover above quite a bit. Maybe not. I guess the camera doesn't want to focus on that. Um, but the easy solution is to just give the tab two quick bends like that. Now that one makes contact, and then this one's already pretty darn close. So what we'll do is we'll straighten out that part. Careful not to short the uh, pliers on the battery itself. And then bend that out, and that's it. And if we solder that down, it should be perfect. Pay attention to the markings on the battery. The uh, larger 
of the two sides is generally the positive and you can see it's marked there. Pads marked. Easy peasy. This is a brand new battery but I've also had it a few years. I vastly Well, not vastly, since it's the only battery that's been in my storage. Uh, but I over-anticipated my battery needs, and thus haven't actually needed this until now. I just want to give it pretty joints because what the hell, why not? Cool, there we go. Jam that in there. Still works? Huh? Huh? Oop, still getting a message. That's not good. So I've also explained this in the uh, battery replacement video that I did. Uh, and I've done a write-up on the wiki. Both of which I will link in the description, but replacing the battery in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald is not as simple as just soldering a new battery in. Um, unfortunately, it glitches out the clock when that happens. Alright, so idiot check, the battery is... Does have a good charge. 3.3, it should be 3.3 as well, 3.3, and I forget which pin, but one of these, that one, yeah. So the real-time clock chip is getting the voltage, which means I have a problem. I don't think this battery has a charge. Nope. <laughs> uh, is it enough to test with though? 0.1 volts. Okay, sure. then there could be some other issue. But as you can see, this cart also has those components that I just soldered down, R5, C1, but those three resistor pads, R1, R2, and R4, are uh, all empty. There's R9 there, it has the capacitor, capacitor, and so on. But why this isn't working, I don't know. I don't know. Let's try resetting the RTC. I'll be right back. Alright, so... Maybe something will happen. Who knows? There it goes. Jesus. 
All right, so I have this homebrew, also linked in the wiki, called RTC Read. It is for DS. It was originally for Game Boy Advance, but someone ported it to uh, DS, and that makes way more sense. Um, but what you do is you plug in your Game Boy Advance cart, start it, and then it pulls the RTC data from the cart itself. And as you can see, it is set to the default, which is 00000. Um, as you can see, I'm refreshing it. It's not changing though. That is, that is a problem. Also, it's not even letting me reset it. I've never seen that before. For, uh, context. Here's that ruby with the dead battery. Jam that in there. Power flag is raised. Battery is probably dead, which is true. Battery is dead. Um, it's not letting me reset that either. Hang on. I have another game that does have an actual battery. One of these does. I don't want to reset the battery on that, but that's our fallback. All right, here we go. So we can see this one is set to uh, February 7th, uh, year 2000, which is probably not correct, but you can see as I'm refreshing, it is incrementing. That is how it is supposed to behave. Uh, but we can set that to the actual date, which is the best way to do, oops. I have this backwards. Uh, I don't know why it makes you set weekday two. You'd think it would know that. Time, it is 14.33. Start, boom. Pull that out. Let's see my other cart. Yeah, that one's dead too. My emerald, I have replaced the battery in this one. So you can see it is way off <laughs> 2051, but I mean, it's working, so I don't want to mess with it. That's why I didn't want to edit it. I, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't remember the date I had set to this because I fucked with this cart a lot. Um, and when I reset the uh, RTC, I had a feeling it was already set to the current date. And I didn't want to interfere with that. So I said, oh, let's just advance it by a good 20 years. That should make sure that it's past the current date. And that's how we end up with the year 2051. But go back to Sapphire, it should still be current time, and indeed it is. So if we try this one again, you can see it's not ticking, which is a problem. It's also not letting me set it, and I don't know why. So I'm going to have to do more research. Oh, probably shouldn't have just yanked that out. And now it's set to 2001. Yeah, I still can't edit it. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to figure something out. But in the meantime, I mean, I guess at least it's working. Uh, maybe I'll throw this battery in one of the other carts that does work perfectly fine, but has a bad battery. Uh, it could be that I know these clock capacitors are generally pretty sensitive to mishandling. I've reflowed it several times, and I've drowned this cart in isopropyl alcohol. It's entirely possible that I killed it. Uh, but it could also be one of the other eight dozen things that was wrong with this cart when I got it. So 
Um, I'll call this a victory, even if I don't have working real-time clock, um, as evidenced by these two carts. I don't really care about that anyway, <laughs> but this is nice to have. But anyway, um, yeah, I will probably do an update to this video when the new version of that PCB comes out, and we'll just transfer over all the components. Because uh, that could also be a problem with this PCB. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure that this is spot on. I am much more confident in my in the issue being related to the fact that the original PCB was just absolutely destroyed and all the pins on this chip mangled. But who knows? Um, it could also be one of the many things that I messed up. But yeah, I don't know. I will go over the schematic. I'll probably keep probing it, but I'm not going to do that on video because I have no idea what I'm looking for and if I'll even find anything. But otherwise, I will uh, catch you all next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the description. Plenty of useful links down there. You know what? This is my own fault for not reading the schematic. I forgot to install R4. R4 is necessary. R1, 2, and 3 are not. I have installed R4. Ooh, the one downside with aftermarket cases. <laughs> there we go. That's awkward. <laughs> Ta-da! So now, if we take the Nintendo DS, shouldn't hot swap carts, but it is less bad to hot swap carts on something like a DS that does not have multiple voltages on the cart bus. But, but look at that. RTC is advancing. Huh? 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 Now I bet I can set. Yep, there we go. We will set it to the 25th. Of September. Time it is no longer 14, but 15. Or seven. Boom. Now, oh, that did not feel happy. There we go. No error message. Rather than uh, trial and error, I just dumped the save, pulled it up in PK hex, and then just checked to see which Pokemon had fly. And yes, it was indeed that Skarmory. My first guess was correct. So had I done trial and error, I would have gotten lucky. PM, so time is not right, not even close, but that's also not what it was before, and I'm willing to bet if I just leave this, we'll be able to watch it tick on its own. But anyway, that's all I've got. I'm just going to leave this here for a few minutes. I'm probably not going to chime in again. But there you go. Thanks for watching. And it does actually work. <laughs>